Hello everyone, tonight we're going to be playing some Crusader Kings 3 as it released today. Probably gonna need to adjust the settings real quick though. I can already see where Yeah. Same count kind of, same level of lag. Like there was with the uh, uh, Imperio, and I played that on a free weekend. So let me just turn down texture quality. I decided to start the crash. Those are already did a great start. I already had technical difficulties in the form of uh, my computer seemed to run out of memory while I was setting stream up. As I did not account for the graphic head quality of the game, so Oh, oh boy. Well this is a, a great sign. But let me just let me just show you real quick. Well, if it'll capture, but yeah, I got a close program to prevent information loss. The computer's low on memory, save your files and close these programs, CK3.exe. Yeah, after, after a real good start. Especially since Steam does not appear to be inclined to let me start it back up. As it's. Oh, it's because Paradox Crash Reporter was still open. Let's, let's try that again since. Windows is advising that I just try again. I can't figure it to, I need to restart again, but I guess not. I mean, I provided the, the settings. Where the, the settings to hook, it should be less graphics intensive now.
Okay, okay. There, there can be you know, most Paradox games are not that demanding on your computer. I mean, most of what you're doing is just looking at a map. But... I'm also used to somewhat older Paradox games. You know, things like Europe Universal 4 and Crusader Kings 2. Not Crusader Kings 3 or Imperator. I got loading as you can probably tell by the well by the sound. Well now I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Everything's in, everything's cool stream lab, so I also need to add in a new new source because I can't get to I can't get it to Sir Kings 3 to show up as an option for my game capture part capturing but it's also lagging so just gonna try again with the settings the settings took you know what? just gonna just get sort of set everything to as low as possible perfectly without having to outward disable anything. You can see where things starting to look a little or starting to be a little better. Let's see hmm. I'm not even entirely sure what that means. So I'm just going to turn that off. Oh, here's hoping it doesn't crash this time. I'm just be loading something. All right, it didn't crash. 
already off to a better start than before. So it's as much as as much as I've played plenty of no uh, CK2. Yeah, I've I've played played enough CK2. That's like my second most streamed game, and that and even uh, that I was playing it quite a bit before I even started streaming it. So, but from what I understand, they've changed quite a bit it, since you know it's a new installment. Plus, a lot of all strategy games seem to be like. Well, are you new to the franchise or just this, this installment? So I'm gonna play the tutorial and and I'll pick the new to CK3 option if there is one. So you know I don't have to go through new a whole bunch of stuff that I already know from no CK2. I think things are definitely loading faster. Oh, that's for sure. Welcome to Crusader Kings, your medieval ruler. Land, land is yours for the taking through clever marriages and diplomacy or by way of the sword. There's no one way to win in Crusader Kings. Only different ways to enjoy the story that unfolds. Still lagging a bit. Maybe I should turn down those animations since you said that to turning it off can improve performance. And use of what? W, A, A, S, and D keys to then move the camera across the map. You can also move the, the cursor to the edge of the screen in, in Japan. And pressing the home key, he takes you to your realm capital. I'll zoom in and out, out on the map, use the scroll wheel. Different information is displayed at the different zoom, zoom levels, details map, political map, and paper map. Zoom in, and then you have the ability to select, zoom in, you have the ability to select manage your holdings. It's... If that is a, that is not a great frame rate, yeah, right there. And then zooming out gives you an overview uh, an overview of all realms. Is it Air King Spain? And so over hundred hundreds of years, many generations. Right now, time is standing still because the game is paused. And is it? For this, this part of the tutorial, we'll keep the game paused. This will only, only walk you through some game concepts. Sometimes you will see a blue highlighted text like this. This means you can hover over your cursor. This means you can hover your cursor over, over the words for more information. Some of these words can lead to other highlighted words, which can then show even further information. So then duchy can lead to county, which can lead to barony. I've, I've done the thing. Now let's talk about the game. And everything that thing takes place on the map before you. The world will consist of large and small pieces of land belonging to someone each belonging to someone based on their titles. Their titles are represented by icons of elaborate coats of arms. Uh, the, the icon representing your realm is set, set by your primary, primary title, oh, which is the most important and prestigious title you hold. So I've got Pay Kingdom of Monster. Or, and Earl the Thumb of Tummond. The claim on the Kingdom of Ireland. Mm. 
that as a ruler you can and only hold so much land on your own, and you will, you will often have other rulers helping hang with the administration of the realm by holding land titles, and then and reporters making them your vassals. To find in your land and your domain, press the home key and zoom in. And, it, and once close up, further up, you can see blue labels on the baronies that belong to you. You know, in this case, it will only be the Luminic. The Oldham of Ormond is held by your vassal. Well, you're playing as, as one of, out of many characters in this world, presented by a character avatar. As your character is the ruler of a realm, well, but you will need, need to make sure your dynasty survives and lives and thrives throughout the ages. Your titles give you power and control over territory and other characters who might hold titles and land of their own. To continue, click on your character. Characters have skills indicating their proficiency within a certain field. Some are great talkers, while, while others prefer to make their intent and clear on the battlefield. So you've got five diplomacy. The 17 Marshal, Stewardship of 9, Intrigue of 7, and he, Learning of 4, and they've actually got like, he can name the ratings as well. Or since he, these are highlighted texts, you can mouse over for each for a breakdown of what they mean. And characters also have traits, which can affect skills as well as how they react to things. These are limited by icons in their character their view. And some traits tell you about a character's personality, like fickle, calm, or generous. Other traits are specific to how how uh, your how a character is of their life, such as your education trait or commander traits. We've got temperate, wrathful, impatient, skilled tactician, and aggressive attacker. From the, this, you can see maybe your character or typically lives a modest life, but it expects others to do so. No, also, and is quick to anger when they don't. Now, when a character chooses to behave against their, their personality traits, it can, it can cause stress. But that's an actual mechanic that's new from the. Uh, there for this installment of the series. Stress, this measures the character's mental well-being. Characters gain stress when taking actions that conflict with their personality. Characters who gain enough stress will also gain a stress level, while causing various negative effects that persist until well, they manage to reduce their stress. Traits can and also impact how other characters react to you. Some people are impressed by the brave trait, while well, lustful characters are more likely to feature in salacious his gossip. Traits influence other characters' morality and greed, which is, can affect both their friendly and hostile actions. All characters, yes, all, have an opinion of, of one another which drives their behavior. Their low opinion can cause people to rise against you, or will, will be, be unwilling to help you. High opinion can, and on the other hand, make characters more inclined to join your murder scheme or fall, fall for, your, for your seduction. Then it, how you choose to interact with other characters will often affect their opinion of you. S the seduction scheme is a personal scheme that aims to make the, the scheme target at one's lover. So you can, you can scheme to seduce people. 
from what, from what I understand, they sort of generalized to the scheme system. Like, you know, in the previous game, it was just, I think, like, making claims on titles and... and and, and assassinations, but now it looks like things like the seduction are schemes as well. Well, to help you further your goals, your goals, you'll need gold. Well, among other things, gold pays for buildings, armies, and bribes. Gold is collected passively from both your holdings and your vessels as tax. Larger vassal, those and more important holdings tend to give you tend to give more tax. However, money is not all. Certain things can only be achieved by spending the right amount of prestige, or, for religious matters, piety. <coughs> you can see the current state of your gold, prestige, Asian piety in the bar to the, to the top right. Your prestige just tells us how respected you are. It can be earned over time by holding lots of titles, for example, or actively, such as by marrying into prestigious dynasties or, or fighting as an ally in wars. Whenever you earn prestige, it needs you build towards your next level of fame. Higher levels of fame make other characters think better of you and, being, and bring powerful ways to wage war. Hmm. Interesting. See what it says about levels of fame. Characters' level of fame measures their general reputation and how well perceived they are by everyone. So when a character gains prestige, they also, pro they also progress towards the next level of fame. Levels are established, distinguished, illustrious, exalted among men, and the living legend. Distinguished has no effect, well, established has no effect. Illustrious. Singers gets you secular opinion plus five and number of knights plus one. Double effects for illustrious. Is it? Exalt among men gets secular opinion plus twenty, and number of knights plus three. Then you get as, a le as the living legend. You gain. Then you get secular opinion plus 30 and plus 4 no knights. Someone can cost prestige like in declaring a war. These allow you to leverage your celebrity even for your own benefit. It, and characters won't, less, they won't think less of you here for using them. Um, spending prestige does not, not affect your level of fame progress. It, it is just your current prestige. With a lot of piety, maybe you will have an easier time I'm interacting with your head of faith. As, a, as you're a Catholic, this is the Pope. Piety can be gained passively from learning skill and from virtuous traits, or actively, maybe from choosing to do religious things, such as going on a pilgrimage. You also have a level of devotion that builds over time whenever you gain piety and can have some positive effects for your character. So. Same mechanic as with with prestige. It's not it's thing tooltip around long enough for me to actually look at the different levels. So as soon as I, as soon as my mouse leaves. The blue text makes the tooltip also disappears. Mm. Similar to prestige, some action is required in order you to spend piety, like declaring war, like declaring holy wars, if you or if you want to create a new faith. But spending piety like this is normal, and characters won't one thing worse if you for it. As well as traits, a character can also pick a lifestyle. There are, three, there are five lifestyles, one for each skill. Lifestyles also represent why you put the most effort into day-to-day. 
Neutron has several focus that is inside relating to it. Every focus gives you a unique, a unique bonus that makes events associated with that focus more likely to happen. Which this is... From what I understand, they basically try to bring over at least like half the mechanics from MCK2 and his expansions. So this is what they, so they brought this over from um, um, Way of Life. Well, I imagine they balanced it a bit better this time. From what I hear, Way of Life is pretty broken. Click on any lifestyle to see its focuses. As time goes by, your character will, learn, will earn the lifestyle experience by maintaining a particular lifestyle. When you acquire enough lifestyle experience, you can select one of that lifestyle's perks from any of its trees. Perks represent that you're practicing, you're practicing and developing yourself over time and offer unique bonuses like special traits or, or unlike or unlock lifestyle specific mechanics and content such as ability to start abduction schemes. As an example, the strategy the authority as well as the chivalry focus all give martial experience which can be used to lose by any of the, the martial lifestyle perks. Perk trees in turn run lead to different lifestyle traits. Well since I've got good mar since I've got seventeen martial which is oh, it's not showing the rating for it just the number and because of this is my martial education I gained gain 30% more experience in the martial lifestyle so I might as well no click on any lifestyle to see its focuses oh, yeah or read that just need to select a lifestyle So you've got strategist, overseer, and gallant, which I feel like already locked these or something. Or maybe that's just my. I think so because it says, yeah, eight out of twenty-seven martial perks unlocked. But here's the focus: of strategy focus, authority focus, and then chivalry focus. Is it so we can get strategy focus for martial no plus three and thirty two martial experience a month authority focus is it is it to gain plus one martial plus twenty percent dread and control growth plus point three he a martial experience thirty two a month. The prowess the story focus gives us plus three prowess, plus ten attraction opinion, plus five new battle advantage. What did dread do exactly? Dread is a measure of how fear the ruler is. Rulers increase dread by performing cruel and heinous acts. It, such as torturing and, and executing prisoners. Dread makes it viable to place a tyrant because unruly vassals can be intimidated or terrified, making them too scared to oppose you. Character's dread can range from 0 to 100. Over time, the dread will tend towards their natural dread, which is defined by their personality traits. A dreadful ruler her reaps the following benefits. Vessels are discouraged from joining factions. Vessels are discouraged from scheming. Increases this vassal all acceptance, e.g., hail revocation. Increases offer vassalization, accept vassalization acceptance. Hmm, interesting. Makes electors more, more likely to vote as you do. Makes these vassals unlikely to pose law changes. See, for vacillation, 
vassalization. An interaction offering vassalage to an independent ruler of lower title rank, peacefully adding them to your realm. Note that brave and bold vassal those are less like are less affected by drag. Control control measures the grip that, that the government has on the population of a county it is crucial especially for collecting taxes from the holdings. When the county may change its hands to the new war control all goes down drastically, which is a good reason to vassalize the current holder instead if the castle spell it may allow. Now, county control can also be damaged by sieges and peasant uprisings. Low control may lead to mechanic corruption, and the primary way of increasing in control is a, is a counselor task available all to your marshal. Hmm. I mean, if I go with strategy focus I can just go ahead and have a whole all no 20 marshall I'm also I'm also close to getting gallant like the very the very first marshall per or could I pick up could be gallant grants Marshal plus two, prowess plus four, wealthy prestige plus twenty percent, traction opinion plus twenty. So it looks like they they're kind of designed to pair with the trees as much as they don't seem to actual as much as the trees aren't they don't seem to require you to be in that particular tree. Ooh, cast a spell at, it costs minus 50%. So it seems like this is for control all type stuff, which is, you know, bolstered by the authority focus. This is, you know, strategy. Hmm. <clears throat> Marshal skill indicates how good a character is at waging war and leading armies in battle. <coughs> the high martial skill is important for army commanders since it improves their advantage in battle. Battle advantage makes one side in battle do more damage. The higher the advantage, the more damage the soldiers will do. Battles often start with one side. Having a higher advantage based on terrain and the martial skill and commander traits of the, com of the commander. Either side may even gain additional advantage from commander roles. <laughs> so I guess part of the question is is plus five better than the what we gain in from plus three? We actually. You ought to like check real quick, see if there's anywhere that shows me the math. Uh, for battle advantage. You know, I haven't completed the tutorial yet, so kind of gonna have a slightly harder time navigating because I don't. Entirely know what I'm doing. Let's see, 
I imagine it's probably in. Here we go. I imagine it's probably in maybe the military menu. Not from what I can see. I think I'll just sit. I think I'll just get back to where I was and he and go for no strategy, new focus. Because like, here's the thing. Go, getting a marshal up to 20 is going to affect more things than, than just improving our battle advantage by plus 5 will. So I've chosen to focus for characters. Where is it? Now having selected a focus, you can move on to other people. You're new to this game, interacting with... If you're new to this game, interacting with the other characters is key, and you have many options that lens how to do so. You can right click on, on a character portrait, including in your own, to get a list of potential interactions such as arranging marriage or initiating a scheme, which is, is also where you start war this is also where you start wars, but let's let's try something else first. Let's start with the basics. Everybody likes gold. Try sending a bribe to your heir. Let's send a gift. Hold well on, you have successfully increased somebody's opinion of you. Certain opinion modifiers last forever, like family bonds. Others will wait over time, like the fading memory of receiving a monetary gift. If you hover your cursor over the the opinion number on another character, you can see exactly where, where the various numbers are coming from. Is it due to you know, a marriage alliance, a gift of gold, or simply that they appreciate your honest nature? Or, now let's talk about your dynasty. As the game goes on, unless your character meets it with an untimely accident or terrible disease, they will grow, grow old and eventually die. The story doesn't end there. It's only game over if you do not have an heir of your own dynasty. Just like in the previous game. As long as you have the heir of your dynasty, the legacy lives on. When your character dies, you simply start playing a new one. And the player heir. Depending on the type of succession the realm has, this is... Likely one of your children, perhaps one that you you're groomed into the role of a ruler. Your Verdancy has its own window of arms, which is currently highlighted and can be clicked for more information. You don't need to do anything with this right now, but if you may want to look look at the details of Verdancy later, it they can be found found here. See so you, you were in the in the house of Brian. House of of the Dalgakay's dynasty, the hound falls before the sword. Dynasty insignificant. You do not have any, the dynasty does not have any legacy as yet. As long as you have heirs of your dynasty, your legacy will live on. When your character dies, you simply start playing. Oh yeah, I read that part. Succession laws determine how no all titles and resources are divided between heirs, heirs when, when a character dies. You currently only have one heir, heir but let's take a look anyway. In some cases, when you take over or your new character, you, you may even find that they are responsible for the entire demise of your previous ruler. Open the realm view on the right side of the screen. Inspect the 
succession had. As a member of a dynasty, you also have renown. Renown shared by everyone in your dynasty. Renown goes up whenever anyone in your, in your dynasty gets prestige and re reflects how infamous is your, your family is rather than just you. Making significant strides in your renown will echo down to on the generations where your descendants slowly increasing your level of splendor. Your, as a dynasty head, the most powerful vassal, or the most powerful member of your dynasty, renown will allow you to unlock dynasty and legacies that will, will benefit all of you. Like prestige, renown remains after your character's death. To view the dynastic legacy of a dynasty, click on on your or somebody or someone else's dynasty, dynasty shield. So we're so we've got confederate petition and then succession law. All children inherit equally. Gender law, male preference, agnatic, agnatic. To ensure for the future of your dynasty, you need, need family members. It, it helps if you are married, but we cannot promise that you will marry for love. Uh, let's get married. For unmarried characters in their domain, and you can sub marriages or betrothals by right-clicking on the character and choosing Find Spouse or Arrange Marriage. Uh, right-click on my own character. And go for find spouse. Choosing find spouse that opens a list of potential spouses. They help them of course all over the world. Well, choosing arranged marriage also opens a list of potential spouses, but only with people from the core of the character you collect. Your own character is visible on the left because this marriage needs your approval. Well, but well, whoever is the lead of the uh, other spouse will appear on the right side as the union will need, need their approval as well. Range marriage can be useful for matchmaking between inner courtiers or for setting up a specific marriage alliance. For now, find spouse is more relevant than to you know, for our pur purposes. <coughs> There are many factors to consider when choosing a spouse. So to help you out, there's a filter available for, for sorting among things. Consider their alliances, personality traits, skills, personality traits, expected fertility, and more. Some traits are congenital, meaning that they might be inherited by your children. Perhaps someone with a trait like that is a good place to start. Or you can change the selecting by Clicking the clear characters button in between the characters you are setting up as you get married. I mean, nothing will happen until you click send proposal. Let's see. <laughs> so imagine they want some kind of traits, inheritable. We've got the Mencia Lopez as De Haro. <coughs> Who is cynical, calm, and brave. Let's see the inheritable trait. I think that might be it. Yeah. Ooh. Debbie over here has, has four different heritable traits. Granted, half of them are bad. So, 
just continue on to the next tutorial. You have selected him two people for your marriage. You are presented with the details of the union along with additional options such as having the marriage be matrilineal. If you are happy with the, the marriage, go ahead and send in an offer when playing this action. It will take a few days, but we'll, we'll make it work instantly this time. How, how old is... Is it King... Is Pei King Mer Mercad 39? I mean, we've already got an heir, so well, let's let's go for Debbie. We'll accept, so excellent. And may you live long and happy and happily together. For this tutorial, we recommend that you use you find spouse for your son and as well. Greetings, Petty King Market out of Munster. I accept your. Her marriage proposal. You'll be joined in with my acquaintance Debbie in, in holy matrimony. May God grant you a long life and many children. Signed, and who could girth the God Hardwinson of of East Anglia. Which, soon as your son is married, he can start producing. Members of her family. So let's find a spouse for her son. Who is eighteen? A few options for somebody that can bring the quick trait into the dynasty. Let's go with Mencia Lopez. Uh, she will accept, so... Oh, and the lines formed with Count owned Ineco Lopez. There's a bit... This guy, uh, Oh, it's already an alliance? Guess they... They don't make a distinction between alliances and non-aggression packs anymore. Greetings, Pegging and Mercat and Monster. Yeah, same same thing as before. Although this time it's made St. Bridget had blessed bless their union. And understand Dancing House. Dynasty is important. The player heir will always come from your dynasty and most often end from your house. In the future, it won't hurt to keep it an eye on your family and their line of succession. Depending on their succession laws, they, they might end up her inheriting titles along with land and vassals from, their, from your relatives. Not, not everyone in your dynasty will be landowners, but every plot of land on the map has an owner. Sometimes that, that owner is you, sometimes it's one of your, your vessels, and sometimes it's another realm entirely. The many of whom you also have or are vassals. You can just skip past something by accident. Most tiles are structured together in a pyramid like fashion using title tier. County. The Duchy Kingdom Empire. Every tier belongs to a title one rank link up the chain. Every the county is technically part of a duchy, every duchy is technically part of a kingdom, every kingdom is technically part of an empire. Now there are many dynastic names in these cells as well, your of oh, dynamic names. The current ruler is in charge of a petty kingdom. Which corresponds to the duchy tier. There are also barons, the minor rulers of single hold holdings, youth and youth counts. These characters are generally quite minor and unplayable. You have one, the mayor of Enos. You see, technically, because as Crusader Kings lets you play with history, there's no way to guarantee that a king is actually in charge of all the titles that his kingdom is supposed to contain within its borders. 
We call this tile hierarchy the juror and if the, and if the structure has been broken, it is often impossible to declare war over such hunched territories. <coughs> if you switch to the Dutchy Tiles map mode, mode you can see that yeah, as the ruler of the Duchy of Munster, the county of Desmond should legally be part of your realm. The different map modes this can help you it will give you an overview of the digital tile structure of the world. Right, so switching map modes to Dutchy tiles. Look, there's Munster, and Desmond is certainly supposed to be part of it. It turns realms map mode. Lag is making scrolling a little unwieldy. The Dijon title of Munster consists of three counties. The names should be visible on the map. Talmond held by you, Desmond held by a neighboring ruler, and Ormond held by your vassal. Well, these counties are made up of smaller pieces of land called baronies. It's on, on this level we find your holdings. Things that Holdings represent settlements in your land. Holdings provide different levels of taxes and levies, levies as well as buildings that you can construct and upgrade depending on the holding type. It is not very important that you build right now, but we, we suggest that you start by upgrading the bastions and curtain walls. Oops. Camp towers, high tents, wooden barracks, bastions and curtain walls, there we go. Can't upgrade that, it'll take three years, but we'll get up to level two. Well done, it will take take some time for the building to be ready though. No. No lumen and he, he wasn't built a, in a day. <coughs> Once the construction is complete, you will receive the benefits of the building you chose. Every holding provides taxes to their holder. If that holder is a vassal, they will also pay taxes to the liege. Taxes provide your main income of gold. Obligations can affect how high or low these taxes are. Times of war also affects a lot level of control in the county, which in turn affects taxes. As a ruler, you are likely to be the liege of at least Use one vassal. These are the rulers within your realm who have sworn fealty to you. Your vassal supply you with money, taxes, and soldiers, levies. It is possible to help both be a liege and a vassal at once. Opening up the realm view again to inspect the vassals tab. As soon as it wants to register, the fact that I click there. All right, there we go. Here's a list of your current vassals, along with some additional information about them. The top of the list is this Earl of Ormond, whose land you, you can see on the map. This is an earldom, the county to your title, inside your realm. Now I'll click here for an overview of things such as your vassals, current opinion of you, whether you're considered a powerful vassal or not, and your whether you consider a powerful vassal or not, and the level of, levels of taxes and levies that they are currently providing you with. So both. Probably because, you know, we're super small. Both of our, our vassals are considered powerful vassals.
is limited to how many vassals you can comfortably charge with before your realm becomes unwieldy. The going beyond this vassal when it affects taxes is in leafies provided to you. This doesn't matter for the tutorial, but when, when you start to build your own kingdom, be mindful of growing too fast. If you end up exceeding your vassal limit, you can grant and low, low ranking or low ranking titles away to your vassals. Sometimes you can even create need new higher third tier titles to consolidate the power in an area and the titles under it. <coughs> the ruler domain, your uh, woman domain, your realm is the complete new body of land and titles that you own, including the areas held by your vassals right now for this means the counties called Earldom due to your Irish culture of Tomond and Ormond. And when in domain is used, you're instead referring to the land that you own personally without vassals, Tomond. Some th things, that, things that happen will only affect your domain, while other things will impact your entire realm, the duchy, or petty kingdom of Munster. Note that there is a limit as to how much land you can hold personally before you start incurring in penalties, the domain limit. When you go above your domain limit, it can be a good idea to use the grant title interaction on characters you are more friendly with, making them your vassals. If you have no spare titles to give away, you cannot currently do this, but you would otherwise find it in the character menu. New visible no one right look um, than right clicking on a character. Managing realm is a lot of work. As a ruler you have the, the help of the council. There 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 can be either vassals it can be either vassals or members of your court, and they can act as your trusted advisors. There's one corresponding to each area of the skill. Married rulers will also have their spouse assisting them. Let's open up the cat Council. Just as soon as it gives me, uh, just as soon as it wants to register my click. Maybe the hotkey will work better. There we go. Pressing F4 worked. Counselor, those can be set to work and they all do two different things. You can change your counselor's task by hey, clicking on the button near their portrait in the, in the council view. Being a counselor is a prestigious, is a prestigious position. Powerful vassals will expect to be chosen for it and be unhappy if left out. So you've got religious relations, and the convert faith in county, and then fabricate claim on county for the for the bishop. Schemes are long long term goals aimed at another character. They can, can be hostile goals like. Make murder or abduction, and if you're of your target, or or be more wholesome, such as the friend scheme. <laughs> Open the entry view. Just gonna press F six to open that up. Like the schemes tab should be open by default. Hustle schemes, personal schemes, discover secret, discover secret schemes. A good time to use a scheme might be even when you find the line of succession not being, being as clear cut as you'd like. One way to get ahead is, some, is to simply remove the competition quietly and with no witnesses. 
murder schemes come with the risk of discovery. If your attempt goes awry, it will make your career unpopular, especially with your target, because you know you you tried to murder them. Swing scheme is made made for increasing the opinion, you know, somewhat uh, the opinion someone has of your character. So let's try it. Open up the council view. It's not the right key for that. Right click on the court, court chaplain, your bishop, and choose the sway scheme. If scheme is successful, well, well his opinion of me will increase by 25%. It will increase by 25 Big time to complete scheme every month there is a predicted chance of 88 percent and to progress based on no scheme power versus scheme resistance. Oops. So once in motion, your, your scheme will slowly progress over time, but the you know, time before conclusion is reached will vary depending on the success chance, which can be be affected by relevant skills. In this case, it, affected, it is affected by your diplomacy. If you're un unhappy with your scheme, you can always cancel it by clicking the abandoned scheme button in next to the scheme. Sometimes schemes can give enterprise the secrets. If you catch some, someone trying to commit murder, it's probably in their best interest is to make, make sure you keep it quiet. You can also blackmail them to gain a hook. Hooks represent a favor you can call one with a particular character encouraging or forcing them to do where you're bidding. As you play, now you'll find many different ways to gain and use hooks. When, when you start playing, experiment with it. Then now let's pretend you're going to get a hook on one of your vassals. We'll get the entry tab open. Check the Hooks and Secrets tab. And war, war is an essential part for Sarah Kings. There's a lot of concepts to cover, but for now let's touch briefly on some of them. Threats and the details will, we will let you discover you start, as you start playing. So the most important things in any, any war are the battles, which are fought not by armies, these, most of your soldiers will come from levies, but you can expand and your army by employing men at arms. If things get really tough, you can also hire mercenaries, provided you have the gold. Wait, military review is F3. It's actually. Oh no, I just pressed here and said. Not by accident. Open up the military view. When the war starts, you will be able to raise your armies. You can the screen via the oh, raise the armies. The raise all armies button. When the war is over, or you will have to disband your, your soldiers before starting another war. Rally points on mustering grounds for for the levies and levies and men and arms under your command. Star War, you'll need the legitimate reason a cast a spell out against another ruler. There are various ways to obtain in the cast a spell out. You might have the Jor titles that make you the right elite, each of your target. You might inherit claims, or you, you could proceed through holy wars against those nearby infidels. Although well, these are the most common, there are dozens of different types of cast a spell eyes. Is for you to discover and use as you play. The easiest and most straightforward way to acquire claims is to use, to use Fabricate Claim on County, which is something your, your court chaplain wants to use to do one of his, his counselor tasks. Almost there. There are soon will we'll let you unpause the game. There are just a few things to go over first. Firstly, it's important to note 
So there are five different speeds available for you to play at. Just press keys one through five to easily switch between them, and you'll, you'll be able to pause or change the pace whenever you want. Secondly, he, he for some unimportant events, the game will have a pause for you. There's nothing wrong with playing at lower speeds, increasing the speed when things are, things are quiet, or slowing it down. Now when you go to war, generally re we recommend you pause the game when inspecting menus or when you are faced with tough decisions. <coughs> Start taking in the taking of time and pause the game using the space bar to, or, or by clicking the play button. And this will let days, months, and years go by. Always told all to do so will move, and events will occur are on screen, meaning that letters will be sent and characters will age. Find a speed that's comfortable for you, you can always change it later. What now? Now is the first task, let's remind find your neighbor, the Earl of Desmond, who has rightfully reached true who he is. If it happens to expand the realm, so be it. Uh, using uh, your character interaction system that using the character interaction system that we went over earlier in selecting and uh, 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 have via the map but declare war on the rule of Desmond then you should uh, uh, already have a valid cast a spell like uh, as his title is uh, de jour or a part of your realm for for more hands on experience will not only they will now walk you through what happens in the flow of war. But first we have a wedding celebration. With my marriage to, to Petty Queen King Debbie, he, the realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration. It is well within my right to collect a royal aid duty. He is part of this. this but some may consider it tasteless to love it. An additional tax during a time of jubilation. So you can either. Oh, it's the same. Basically, the same event as usual as in the previous game when the ruler gets married. You get to choose between prestige and money. Yeah, I think I'll go for prestige. Get some. Um, progress towards becoming distinguished. Se seems to have gotten a good chunk of progress. Those two. Right. Time to go after Earl Murdoch Egg Mac Egg of Desmond. Clear war. We have the Castle's Bellite. I need to gain the gain the the contest of county. Right now. to raise my armies just like and that is a character that joins our army to fight alongside your soldiers during in battles knights use their prowess skill to fight more effectively hmm so looks like we've got 10 knights apparently Gonna raise all armies. Move your army, put left click on the army, he on the map. Live and right click on the area where you want them to go. There be all of my armies. I mean, it could raise all armies, so it should be.
If you order your army to cross the army across waters, I'll embark turning into a fleet. For now, let's stay on land. Which I mean, I mean it, we have a land border, so unless we want to do some some like crazy the crazy strategy where we just like dip into the water and then then back back to land. I think army is moving and is probably heading into battle with enemy forces. This can be a head on encounter with other armies or the start of a siege. Battles will happen automatically if two hostile armies cross paths. Similarly, sieges is occur when you place your army on an enemy holding. This is a good time to unpause the game if you haven't done so yet, otherwise time stands still and armies will not move. Or night, hey Mercate, hey, hey, oh, we we lost the night. Hey, it looks like, but hey, we won the battle. Your enemy is attacking an enemy holding. Click on the, the highlighted icon, the spearheads. To find out how it's going. You need, you need to win and see just to, to win most wars and just of uh, the game not working super great you know, game not running super great on you know, my computer and my mouse being terrible well I end up of losing sight of the seat each thing. Now let's do it again. Each win siege is to win most wars. As they increase your war score whenever the siege is won, it takes a few rounds of attack. The area will become occupied, changing its radio look for look on the map to a striped one. The color of the straight ape shows who, who has occupied the holding since your color on the map is green. Holdings you you have uh, uh, occupied will have green stripes. Holding occupied by the King of France, however, would have blue stripes. When occupied by the King of England, in red, and so on. Then, to get an idea of who's winning a war, or you can always look at the war score. We're in the lower, lower right hand corner. We're at 23% war score. Goes from negative 100 to you no know, positive 100 based on battles and sieges won, and or lost, as well as territory occupied. At 100 war score, you can force the other side to accept your peace offer. Conversely, at negative 100 war score, they can force you to accept their peace offer. So currently sieging Desmond. Just as soon as I unpause. So they're apparently going they're apparently going into the ocean somewhere. Petty Queen Debbie gained the trait pregnant. Well well sure that's that's one way to that. Yeah, you're right if Petty Queen Debbie is is bearing your child. Yeah, that's that's one way for it to reveal that, that my wife is pregnant. Just, Petty Queen Debbie has gained the gained the pregnant trait. <laughs> you gained gained levy desertions for five years. This problem happened in the spider of Marshall's above average sk uh, edge Marshall skill. Gonna have to deal with the siege over in Ormond, and after we're done here, which they looks like they're gonna be surrendering in twenty days, maybe, 
No, that's just an event that's happening. Stalemate. Actually, it's maximum of two months left. Maximum of one month. And down below the need to count in months. Even though it's still over a month on the, on the maximum. But less than a month to go. So it should be able to just. Oh, or we could get our war score up to 100%. In which case, we aren't even going to need to, in which case we can just enforce demands, and there we go. Congratulations on your victory, you have now experienced what it was like to make it enter an essential part of the game. From now on, we will stop the tutorial lessons appearing. You will, however, still be able to get some advice if you, you open them when they, they pop their alert. At the top of the, of the screen in this advice, you will elaborate on the most important things you encounter. Thank you for staying with us and good luck. To my elite page, your wisdom and mercy, and mercy are legendary. You are much greater foe than I imagined. And in order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your, your demands. What now? Uh, there are many, many things you can uh, do now that they have, have dipped your feet in the essentials. Crusader Kings is about setting your own goals. Well, if you want a suggestion, we recommend and you try to become the king or queen of Ireland. War is not the only way, either. I mean, war might as well be the way I do it, because as I've got this, this mighty what this excellent 22 room military the ability so we got Desmond now time to disband all the armies so that we can be ready if we end up of declaring war again. So we have six issues. Now you can change Earl Ragnvald Hall's Hall's contract. That's the. Uh, so you you have a hook on your va on your fuel vessel, Earl Ragnvald Sigtrid Higson of Ormond. Then you can spend it to modify their contract. I can declare war on the, on the Earl A. D. McNeil of Alec. Where where is he? Like I would like to at least know. Oh, it's way over here at the top of, of the of the very northern. The most coast of Ireland. Powerful vessel demands council position. Oh yeah, because because this guy is now powerful kingdom. He's now a powerful vassal. So I guess he's gonna be taking the place of Either the bishop, the spy master, or the marshal. His best ability is he is marshal, not as good as our existing marshal, but it will at least get him to hate us a bit less. Let's see. Is under personal? Nope. I think it's just under this. Oh, point of marshal.
Then Earl Mer Yep, the Earl of Desmond. You know, it's it's not great, but and now he's not gonna be he pissy about not being on the council. Never mind. I'm not sure how much room he had as as to be pissy, given that I just beat him in a war. But you know, which I think I think the current contract with that guy is all right. Family members can get married. Their half brother might. I don't really care that much about my half brothers right now either. My heir was already married, so he's he's the most important one to one to marry off. You can ransom um you can ransom this child. The prisoner gambler. Personality gambler. Okay, I was wondering how a four-year-old got like deep into deep into gambling. <laughs> like, I mean, sure, he's in prison, but just gonna ransom him for ten gold. And they gain suggestions, increase opinion. I'll worry about that after I finish swaying the thing we finish this scheme thing that I've currently got going. I mean oh it says Bishop Gutten He's already been swayed, it looks like. So, let's start a scheme to sway. Hey, our new Earl instead. So now we've just got the fact that we can declare war on this guy. A result of my courtier's claims and HP support assistant decided to show up. I I do not need a tune up in fifteen minutes. How about you remind me in one day, HP? Which I could probably do it, but like I mean it, Like, I mean, he's got no allies in just the one, one, one county, so. Let's declare war. Raise all armies. Nice if there's just a button to do that. That pops up when you start a war rather than needing to go all the way into specific tab to do it. Let's start marching. You can call, call on your ally, they count an echo. Yeah, well, let's call, call that guy in. I mean, that's one of our biggest advantages we've got. It's the fact that we have an ally. 
All right. All right, we're allied with that guy because of our marriage to Debbie, I think. Greetings, my liege. I accept your ransom offer and hope to see the he telecom on our little more Norba return to me in good health. Uh, so this guy from Castile is joining in on our war over here in, in Ireland. My daughter, with a tired, hair dead, blissful smile, Debbie presents me with a perfect little daughter who will only become my child. What shall I, I, I call you? I can go with Lurthen and name her after De name her Debbie, name her after an ancestor, give her a good Catholic name or a good Irish name. Lurthen is a fine name, I guess. <laughs> Greetings, my liege. I, in serving as your steward, I have learned much about record keeping and finance. I'm willing to tutor you in these topics to repay you for the help you have given me in the past. It's Sure. As long as he doesn't somehow use that weak hook against me, he, he that should be fine. That's auto saving. Yeah, just gonna stomp the, these guys. Bring my amicable leash. May you live in harmony and contentment. I have been a good vassal to you, but surely you understand that I have such a, subjects of my own. Room two, my current in contact, uh, my current contract is very restrictive. Surely you would see the wisdom of making it more lenient. Oh, okay. So he immediately uses his weak hook to lower his taxes. Yeah, there, there goes pretty much our entire army. So now I've just gotta do the siege. Doom that on the gal. Ill, my mortal body. Petty king or peasant, high or low, it does not matter. In the end, we are all mortals. I was reminded of this as I woke coughing in the early morning hours, a dull ache pounding through my head and throat. So I've got an option of... of it. Then for a position now, my servants will search for, a pos for possible court positions, or I can just go without a position and just sort of wing it. I'm gonna go for finding a position. And finally, my servants have found some people who might maybe fit to serve as court position. Either way, I fear I cannot afford to be picky now. Oh, apparently, D Hager is, is quite experienced. Pearl seems enthusiastic, if nothing else. <laughs> I've got the money, I'm gonna go with the guy with experience. Time has come to treat your cold. Well, while I am fairly certain that some humble tincture will suffice, the choice is yours, my lord. Do no more than, than what is necessary, or it is too late for caution. A risky treatment may have, have great outcomes, but could also lead to worsening symptoms or permanent injuries. I'm going to go with do no more than, is than what is necessary. Dagger brought me a concoction made from buttonhook thorn and cinna. 
At first, I thought the potion was an effectual, but later the same day, I felt a churning in my bowels, which sent me running for the privy. I, as I held in anguish, it, the dagger assured me, me that the foulness was expected and was expelled with my feces. In the end, for the, clean, the cleansing turned out to be just what I needed. For now, the worst of my symptoms are alleviated, and the world, world seems a little brighter. <laughs> Four months left on the siege, which we're at fifty percent, and our buddies from from Castile just arrived. <laughs> Which we're currently holding the thing, the Emmy Leader's son, in captive. For the need something days left. Just gotta wait a little bit longer. We should soon. Yep. Here we go. Enforce demands. Greetings, Peking. Name Merca of Monster. Or may your humors rot in your living body. Your or greater foe other than I imagine. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. Right. Expand all all my armies again. So now Alec is, is also part of my, my petty kingdom. Can change Earl Donald's contract. Oh, I can also declare war for war for Oriole. My attempts to align it, Earl. No, Miradak, to know my interests, I have found an opportunity. I think I could argue that our goals are in fact the same as I dictate made my letter. I emphasize those shared interests, 52%, and to then chance just gain. Have him gain three penny of me and continue my efforts. Let's see. I'm just gonna go for the thirty. As I woke this morning, laying it and saw rays of sunshine falling through my window. It took me a moment to realize I had slept soundly for the first time in weeks. I did not wake up coughing for once. So I am well again. Let's see. So this guy has. What is it? A. Then the ally in the forge is. The duchy of. Uh, oh, the principal already winned. <laughs> Got a powerful vassal demanding another council position. So, either chancellor or spy master. Well, pretty much his only skill is. No, this is, this is intrigue. Also, he's apparently club-footed. So, I guess... Yes, he's our new spy master. She's actually almost as good as our existing one. So, got a decent portion 
of North Ireland under our control now. In less than an hour and a half, I'd say, because it, that was part of the most dreams and technical difficulties. Let's see. Claire Warren, Earl Domino, No Magneo, No Oriole. Yeah, let's let's go for it. We've been we've been just sort of brute forcing the oh the cast three hundred seventy five. I mean, need for siege. So let's actually wait on that. Just like you know, work on it, on everything, things sort of internally. Also, my throat is kind of dry, so I will be right back. I'm going to get something to drink. Some... Oh, your stream is experiencing issues, it says Streamlabs. Anyway, just gonna... Be right back, stretch my legs a bit, get something to drink. And more CK3 coming right up. I hope when I get back.
Alright, I'm back. Great to continue. Still got about an hour of, stream, of time to stream left, so. <laughs> Let's try and get our prestige up. Uh, the face encyclopedia, face tooltip modes. I don't really care about either of those things all that much right now. Three issues. You can lawfully imprison this person. Ethan, he is a known criminal. Fornicator, an opinion of, and a fornicator characters plus ten. This is a crime to Earl L. Mirror that I could, I could Ethan his liege for being Catholic. Catholic opinion minus five, imprison, revoke title. Ethne has copulated outside of wedlock. Uh, outside of wedlock. <laughs> so, so apparently, dishonorable gambler. So, so apparently. Apparently, because this Ethne, he is unmarried and and thanks someone, she's now labeled as a criminal. <laughs> Might succeed twelve percent. Nah, that's not. I don't think it's serious enough of a crime bother with such a low chance of actual success a imprisonment like if you're going to imprison someone for horny crimes at least have a good chance of actually succeeding <laughs> and you know Under siege, the true enemy of every soldier under his, compl his complacency. My marshal, Earl Mirabag, makes says and rearranges his shirt. We are standing up, hanging side by side, made up from the castle's walls, looking down on all the soldiers constructing, conducting drills below. You can exchange the castle's gate for planks of wood and dull the arrows as in the troops quivers, he continues. Lead the soldiers in a mock charge against the castle and see how, how they do in action. So you've got good idea. You should be you should lead to the defenders or our time is better spent improving our defenses. You know what? I might gain a martial lifestyle perk from this, so sure, go for it. Under siege, first charge. A tightly shut gate made in walls that loom, loom high into the sky. Archers can be seen in his shadows moving behind the battlements in it, and a feeling of genuine excitement permeates the air. Where in the wall, well before the battle, I turn and address it as the soldiers. My order rings out loud and clear across the battlefield. Charge the main gate or bring out the ladders. Either, ooh, fifty-seven percent chance the attack progresses very well, or it will just progress well regardless. But this gets me fifty martial lifestyle experience 
a, a, a prowess challenge and, and <coughs> And it, uh, it doesn't incur any stress, so let's go with that one. The attack progresses very well. Stairwell echoes as another dulled weapon bounces off the middle pillar. For the second time in a matter of minutes, I curse the tight spiral that blocks us from swinging our weapons at the defenders. The heaving breath of the soldiers around me is, now, around me is deafening, and... And with every repelled attack, they grow no more resigned and frustrated. I have to take charge of the situation. Don't let up. We will overwhelm them. You gain 50 martial lifestyle experience and 73% chance the attack progresses very well. Or, or one at a time, stay alert. Or behind me, I will protect you. I'm gonna go with "Don't let up." We will overwhelm them because again, doesn't. Ooh, you can unlock a new perk for the martial lifestyle. Under siege, battle and bravado. Taking the final step up onto the walls, and all surrounding the castle, I survey the scene. Many soldiers have. Those may have been lost to the archers on the walls, but we will not be deterred. One, one after another, we overwhelm the defenders and stand victorious over the fallen. I take a deep breath, and then it is time to pass on. Time, time to press on again. We are winning, but there is no room for mistakes. I can either go for, or hit them hard. They are not our friend. They are not your friends today. The tech just. Progresses very well by default. Everyone with me. I'll just go for hit them hard. They are not your friends today. Keep the keep the battle pro progressing very well. Well, I've already un unlocked unlocked a perk. The castle is ours. Among the celebrating soldiers, I find it Earl Mer Ag who congratulates me on it, the charge well led. Look at them, my lord, the, the change of pace did them good. Have you, have you even you seem reinvigorated, even though your castle is lost to attackers? Ah, but I, I was the attacker, so... Our enemies will never stand a chance. Oh, I, I can unlock two perks now. Gonna go for... Bellum Gistum, which lowers the castle's bell I cost by 50%, so we should be able to easily go for the. So we should be able to easily go for that next, to, next part of Ireland now. But also, we have options of Serve the Crown, Gaining the Gallant Trait. Or any of these three. Parthian Tactics. Improves Light Cavalry, Heavy Cavalry, and Skirmish or stuff. Organized March. Movement Speed plus 15%. Heavy Infantry Screen plus 5. Spearman Screen plus 5. Archer Screen plus 5. Skirmisher Screen plus 5. And engineered for destruction, naval speed plus 25%, siege weapon effectiveness plus 40%. Siege weapon stuff could be useful, which I could always just go for Gallant. So Gallant gets plus 2 no martial. Hmm. Let's see what kind of name of soldiers I actually have, because if I've got a decent amount of skirmishers and cavalry, 
protein cakes, head cakes could be a pretty good option. Also, might as well see what development, minute arms efficiency, hit and run. And it, And in living off the land, retreat losses and eight of twenty five percent, heavy infantry damage plus fifteen percent, heavy infantry toughness plus fifteen percent, spearman toughness plus thirty percent, archer damage plus thirty percent. So I think I will see why to. Sort of the composition of my military is. Quick to show detail. Most of the Gone. Do the thing. Let's see. The reason I would counter other types. Yeah, but like, how do I know? Go like. Skirmishers or whatever. Now I'm just gonna go for. Just gonna get back to the. Near the menu I was in. Okay, organized march. Honestly, the movement speed boost by itself well, it seems pretty good, so let's go with that. Which will later get hit and run, then sappers, and then finally strategist. It is once you've got. Well, I think. Hmm. Actually, we need to complete everything in the tree before we can get sappers. We need to complete everything else, I think, before we can get sappers. And then, you know, we'll get everything eventually. He, he provided that uh, the king lives, the pay king lives long enough. And it's not letting me view what strategist does because I just decided to do the thing where the tooltip just disappears as soon as I I leave leave it. As soon as my mouse leaves it, leaves the option. Wait. So let so I believe now that she, now that we've got she, uh, the fifty percent cheaper Cassus Bell I will have the we'll have the prestige for this faster. Because, you know, rather than it being in the 300s, it's now in, in the, the, like, if you round it up the 200s. <coughs> Just gotta wait a little while. Hopefully they'll still be involved in whatever conflict they're in right now. No, uh, because it, well, we could use that to our advantage. When it comes time to actually make our attack. But right now I need to unpause the game so that, that time will actually progress. I guess uh, I'm going to take it up to four speed. Since I'm mostly just waiting to gain, gain prestige. 
prestige before declaring our next war. The end of the or at the end of the field exercise, I had, had a team to gain a brilliant idea, but I had to practice a mass regrouping an army in disarray. I split my troops and, and ordered every art, uh, officer to independently make their way to the Of course, uh, by the third day of waiting, but with only half my army in place, I started to see flaws in the plan. Brian suggests that they ride out with a contingent of knights to find the missing troops while the rest of the army returns home. Can either go for possibility of gaining a martial lifestyle perk or good idea you're in charge. I'll, I'll go for the lifestyle perk. Or the possibility of a lifestyle perk. When my, or, uh, when my outriders brought news of the little encampment, you do not expect to find the soldiers still no practicing their battle formations. It seems that my knight to, he dumped that act. He took it upon himself to continue the field exercises while waiting for word, word from the main army. His troops line up not neatly as I write, right up to meet him. So you have the options of, those were not the orders I gave. You, by it's a insult him. Once this shoddy stands, then there's no way to hold a sword. Or take the men home. I'm done. That guy. I'm tired of searching. I'm gonna. You know what, Gerald? I'll go for the option that gets me a little bit of dread. Sure. Approaching a lake, I spot a camp pitch to inch on its shores. As I enter it, I am met by the surgeons in charge. My lord, our water stores leaked at eight while on the move, and our pack animals cannot make the march home with that no more water than we currently have. Now the soldier looked at me nervously. If the lord and his knights helped carry water skins, however, this is the only way, or... The men will march, and they will march now. I'm sure, I'll spend the seven pack to siege. They'll delay our upcoming war with the Oriole a little bit, but I can hear some of them from outside, them from outside the roadside night tavern, and as one one of my knights kicks open the door, my wayward red soldiers fall silent. My rival makes him stare down into their tanker with nary a word between them. The proprietor narrows his eyes. So you're responsible for this rabble? We've got the options of I've got enough coin to pay for the damages. I am tired of dealing with undisciplined soldiers. Or these men have the right idea to pour me a drink. I'm temperate, so that's not a good option. Plus, it costs prestige. So, I'll just pay the 15 gold. Less of my troops have made it back to Luminaki, and under order has been restored. This, though this was hardly a display of military brilliance, I've gained a new respect on, on my, a new perspective on my army and the individual soldiers of which it is composed. And I gained a, I gained another unlock like for my martial lifestyle. So might as well just pick up hit and run. Now back to just Waiting for things to tick up. As I need more prestige, especially since I spent like 75 of it. Due to having to take the time to carry water.
the base. Sure, I'll, I'll read about religion mechanics. <laughs> All characters believe in a faith, which in turn belongs to a religion. For example, Catholicism is a faith that, which belongs to Christianity. Each every faith is different from every other faith. But let's take a take a closer look. Come let let me view new Catholicism. There we go. The faith, your faith has a number of. Come on, let me let me drag this out of the way of me actually being able to view things. Things that is the is that back open. Doctrine and religion. <coughs> Your faith has a number of doctrines. These doctrines that that rules the members of the faith and govern many things, such as gender succession laws, laws available, or what right characters can hold uh, hold temple holdings. Tenets at the top are special doctrines that give bonuses or options to your character, with the ability to meditate or participate in great holy wars. All faiths also have sins and virtues, news indicating behavior that is either frowned upon or celebrated by your peers. So we've got armed pilgrimages that cost rulers of this faith 20% 20 less piety to declare holy wars. If one exists to have faith, faith can then declare a great holy war when the, the faith has, has high fervor. If no head of faith exists, adherents gain a bonus to the convert faith in an county councilor task per controlled holy site. Control in characters of this faith gain an additional bonus upon the successful completion of a pilgrimage. Communion. <coughs> characters may seek indulgence that is from the head of faith to pay gold in exchange for piety. Characters who have committed criminal acts may seek indulgences to gain forgiveness for them instead. Spiritual heads of faith can faith may excommunicate other characters of their faith. Faith that makes it honest of value. No Catholic opinion plus ten, piety need plus one, one per month makes deceitful sin. Inverse of the pre, uh, of the bonuses for or the. That is for the no virtue. Our rituals are not merely symbolic, they invoke the very the presence of, of the divine itself. But those who cannot add or do not join earnest in their practice cannot be true believers. There is a, a pilgrim of travel, travel across the, across the world to visit our sacred holy sites, he will gladly take up the sword to keep them safe from anyone who would harm them. Monasticism. Courtiers can take the vows and become a monk, makes temper the virtue, make gluttonous a sin. The, the pleasures of fine food and drink only serve to mere distract the act us from the service to the divine. Exiling ourselves to remote, remote monasteries is the best way to avoid these temptations. So, you know, we've got the sins of lust, gluttony, deceit, eat, sadism and vengeance and the virtues of those of chastity temperance honesty compassion and forgiveness male male dominated men are stronger and better they were equipped to lead us in this harsh and for unforgiving world so you shall entrust them with the government Ruining our society. Righteous adherents of other faiths will have opinion penalties of 100%. Can revoke the land tiles from evil infidels without incurring tyranny. Okay, so it doesn't really describe what exactly it means by evil. As morals, we cannot fully complement and comprehend God's will, but our, our priests will have a, a pretty good idea of what is holy and what is profane. Theocratic. 
Temple Holdings will lease out to the holders Realm Priest, who then serves them as a theocratic vassal. Only sanctioned priests can be entrusted with, the, with upholding our faith doctrines, and by extension, with managing and caring for our sacred places. In the ecumenism, other Christian faiths that have the ecumenism doctrine are considered astray instead of hostile. Stray means the faith differs in a way that is not particularly significant. Intermarriage may still happen. Character opinion minus 10. Popular opinion minus 15. Can usurp their titles. Our, our religious leaders have historically engaged in interfaith dialogues to increase cooperation among, amongst the different Christian denominations. That marriage type monogamous, divorce must be approved, bastardry, the, the legitimization, consent, languidity, which is, is it marriage between cousins, aunts, slash nephews, and uncles, slash nieces, is allowed. Sexual relations between cousins, aunt, aunt slash nephews, and Uncle slash nieces will not give the incest secret. Ew. Same name sex relations signed deviancy criminal. Why are they defining as a deviant? <coughs> oh, it's just very vague. Vague who so and so has an eclectic and unconventional taste. It's clear that there is only one proper way to love another. Any deviations from that form are sinful and should be punished. Is it? Male adultery is only sh is only shunned. Men with the adulterer or fornicator trait are shunned. And it is sinful for men to engage in intercourse outside of marriage, but like all sins, it it is the divine who must judge them for their failings. So shunned means many face of doctrines. Ah, uh, the characters are shunned. When characters who are caught practicing behaviors are shunned by their faith, lose a level of devotion, and gain a corresponding fame trait. This trait will be disliked by everyone whose faith considers that behavior to be either shunned or criminal. Oh, female adultery is criminal. So, if that, if that lady before, or even before had been a man, she would have just been shunned. It wouldn't have given me the 12% chance of being able to imprison her for horny crimes. Ken slang, clothing, those, those can is criminal. Fratricide, in the acts like it can then not be tolerated in a just and righteous society. Those who commit such offenses will be punished. And witchcraft is also criminal. Only the divine have the right made to work miracles on this earth. Any who make profane attempts to do so do the same shall be punished for their hubris and arrogance. Clergy doctrines, clerical function, control. The clergy derives its authority from God, not Himself, and that still applies here on Earth. The clerical gender, there are only men. Only men can be granted temple holdings or serve as court chaplains. Only men, men can shoulder the great responsibility of serving as priests of our faith. <laughs> Is it spiritual hope for life? A critical appointment. The head, head of faith or clergy appoints all realm priests and these are chaplain or court chaplains. The realm priest or court chaplain have their seat for life. Maybe clerical marriage is disallowed. Members of the clergy are forbidden from marrying. 
becoming a priest means devoting one's life to live to God it is inherently unfaithful to consider taking a mortal spouse in addition to that. Because you know, it does it is monogamous. <laughs> Which if I had if I ever gain enough piety I could create my own form of Christianity. <laughs> But that's but that's one of the mecha new mechanics I'm most interested in is just the ability to just create a new faith. Like, oh, you don't you don't like your existing religion? Just make a new one. From the faith view, it is possible to create a new faith of your own. Doctrines and tenets will. It will cost a certain amount of piety depending on which tenets your current faith has. So this is not something to worry about now for your first character, but it can be a very fun first goal to work towards it when you're feeling more confident. Family members and vassals who have a high, high opinion of you are likely to join you in your faith and high learning skill. No can convince many more, but anyone of your old faith who does not like convert will, will consider you a heretic. So like, it costs two thousand, and it's like it costs two thousand thousand faith. So we're nowhere near that, but maybe at some point, do we have a whole selection of icons? Could could just sort of. Including a variety of non Christian icons, so. In fact, like this. It's only showing one cross, one, one non inverse cross as an option, so. But could just have. Make like they just like select like a rose or something as a symbol. You know, first I'll have to get the precision. I'll have to get the the piety, and also I'd have to figure out what I actually want to change. Because I'm thinking, you know, do like I did with changing any the, the succession laws in Lithuania and CK2, and just do it based on, on is this super beneficial to my current ruler? All is fair. Many new treatises as have been written on a, on an honorable con conduct in war, but those authors' lives weren't on the line when they put a pen to paper. I know from experience that the best way to you know, defeat my enemies is to ensure we only engage in battle on my terms. The question is, what terms would be most av advantageous? You can go for either. I'll trick my enemies into overextending. Hidden run tactics will wear my foes down. Or I will not stoop to fighting dirty, which will lower my, my stress by a 10. Do I actually have stress though? I think I might be. No, I'm not at all stressed, so. It's either. Trick my enemies into overextending or hit and run tactics. See, practice hit and run tactics for five years. Lower retreat losses and friendly. 
mainly he failed no casualties we have 50 percent chance of success of this one and I don't think the hundred uh, uh, the military light lifestyle experience is worth uh, losing there's a chance of losing 75 in prestige and being forever known as a foolish <laughs> Right. Should be getting fairly close to having enough prestige to go after Oriole. Okay, let's let's see. We need 188, so we need 80 more, which will be. At most 80 more months as we're gaining 1.6 prestige per month but also I just gained another yeah I'll just go ahead and grab gallant now I've got another Commercial lifestyle perk. <laughs> the tire jet blissful smile handle Debbie present this me with a perfect little son and uh, and Connery. You know, let's actually since I mean the mo the mother hat has has a lot of congenital traits, so let's see. If any of that has been passed down to, down to my children, okay, Earthan is feeble but also intelligent and comely, and Connery is also feeble, all quick and comely. It's a bold maniac. Henry Brain will act against you and, and others according to his personality, which is primarily determined by his personality traits. My daughter is a covetous planner. She's she's getting the charming trait. Needed in her childhood. Guards directed for Levy. Earl of Tommen then gained Thieves Guild well for five years. This ha problem happened in spite of your marshal's average marshal skill. Right. Got unpause. Got. Only a few minutes left in my usual streaming time, so probably gonna wrap it up soon. And for some reason the game has decided to not scroll anymore. Fun. Yeah, maybe I can just navigate by like centering on things. Maybe the Isle of Man. Nope. It's not working. I need to just 
not letting me scroll. You see, or, or old of time no longer has unsafe highways. <laughs> right. It's, well, seeing as how it's. Seeing as how it's almost 2 a.m., not my time. And the game has decided to start glitching, hang on me, even more than it kind of already was. I'm gonna save and call the stream there. So thank you all for watching. Next stream will be the Thursday with Age of Wonders. Then Saturday I'll be me streaming Crusader Kings 2 some more as I have not completed my current and as I I completed my current campaign of that. Uh, gonna find somebody to host. Those who's also playing CK3, which there's bound to be plenty. I'll, pro I'll probably play this again next Saturday and in the meantime probably tinker around with the settings a bit try and get to things working a being a bit better with the whole lagging issue just gonna find somebody me who's who is it streaming CK me three with a low view account Not sure this, this person's apparently new and learning, so let's send a raid away. Again, thank, thank you all for watching. Next stream on it. <coughs> Thursday with the Age of Wonders. Next CK3 stream will be next Saturday, with this Saturday being CK2. As I did not complete my goal of getting thing to 1444 before or the end of August.